I'm Betsy O'Hagan. I manage web and marketing for Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society, a chapter of the National Audubon Society based in the Cleveland, Ohio area. And um, today I'm here with Thomas Curtis, who is going to be presenting on uh, Tuesday, December 1st, as a speaker in the Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society speaker series. Um, and so, Thomas, hello. It's nice to meet you and to see you here virtually. Yeah, hi, nice to meet you as well. Um, so I'll start off by introducing myself. My name is Tomas Curtis. Um, I'm a student at Kent State, um, but currently I'm affiliated with the Portage Park District, and what I do there is I inventory parks and uh, a lot of botany, but also lichens, which um, this presentation will be focused around. Um, I'm personally passionate about uh, um, all of nature, really, but uh, in particular, a lot of, a lot of the um, inanimate organisms like plants and fungi and uh, mushrooms and whatnot, those are the organisms that pique my curiosity in particular. And um, what I see for the future of, I don't know, my personal, uh, my personal future, I guess, is definitely going into the field of biology and trying to help in conservation. And so, yeah. That's uh, pretty cool. Um, so how did you get started in all of this? Like, what would you remember how old you were, or was it, did it come out of an interest in a school project? How did you get connected first, first on? Um, well, a lot of my family members are in the field, so I certainly have some influence in that respect, but I just... Through that, my whole life I've been interested in organisms, you know, animals, catching animals as a young kid, and that morphing into a lot of other things. Um, yeah, that answers your question. Yes, yes. So can you tell us just a little bit about um, the nature of your presentation and what it is that you feel you'd like to, to share with everyone? Yeah, so this presentation is in particular going to go over um, lichens and in particular what has been done in the recent future uh, in the study of lichens in Northeast Ohio, which is very pertinent to this society. Um, and I'm going to be going over, first of all, for those who are not as familiar with lichens and what they are and what the associated tax are, I'll be going over them and a uh, history of lichens in Ohio, and then I will begin to discuss some of the great strides that we, me and my uh, coworkers who have been working with me on these projects, what we've accomplished. Wow, that's exciting. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the projects that you're working on now and where they are? and? and uh, maybe some interesting things that you've learned. Yeah, um, so some projects currently that I'm working now, I'm writing a couple papers on um, one, a species that is apparently new to North America that has been described in Europe and has been found here. Um, I think it was in Ladue public hunting area. So, you know, just, very close to this region and um, uh, also there is a handful of new species that uh, I have found in the area that I'm describing and writing a paper on that um, but just I'm trying to create a first a first baseline list of all the lichenized lichenical it's an allied fungi that are now known for the region yeah, because that has never been done before, believe wow. it or not. So, yeah, so a lot of very busy, a lot that can be still done, and a lot that's being done currently. 
Oh, that's really cool. If someone wanted to get engaged or like a citizen science project or to help out or to learn more, um, where would they go? Uh, for example, where might they go online or how can they connect with you? Are you on social media? How, where would people go and who would they connect to? Um, a good place to start if you're trying to learn about lichens mm -hmm. and lichenology is the Ohio Moss and Lichen Association and their oh. website. That's a great resource. You know, there's pictures, there's descriptions, there's distribution maps, there's uh, links to different kinds of literature of, uh, you know, that pertain to lichens and lichenology in Ohio. Also, if you're trying to contact me personally, uh, I have an iNaturalist account, and I help people a lot with um, lichen identifications and uh, work with lichens on that website. It's informal, but you feel free to contact me there. Uh, that sounds pretty neat. Um, can you is there can you tell us maybe a story or two about something that's really exciting that you're working on right now? I mean, it sounds like it all, it is all exciting. But yeah. What, what's um, and I uh, I love it that it's it's uh, you're creating a new baseline. That's that in itself is sounds so fun. Mm -hmm. um, just think of all the discoveries you'll you'll make and others with you. Um, yeah. So so is there is there any project or something that you're learning a lot or that you're particularly excited about? Well, yeah, I think that you mentioned the baseline list. I think that's probably the accumulation of all the species that have been found is probably the most interesting part to me. Um, and all of these species that, you know, are new to Ohio, I mean, probably over 200 species have been found new to Ohio in just the last few years. Wow. So, and all of these species have herbarium records. So I'm collecting all these species, me and colleagues of mine are collecting these and you know it's a lot of collections and herbarium specimens it's but it's it's a lot of fun i enjoy it and it's great to see all the the accumulation of that into one document and it's 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 progress in that, that piece. so exciting well yeah. tell me are, are do other are other states in the same startup position that ohio is in as far as lichens go and identification of them? Yeah, I mean, honestly, most states don't even have uh, something like the Ohio Moss and Lichen Association. So a lot of states, probably the vast majority of states in the United States are starting at a much lower uh, knowledge, having a lot less knowledge and a lot less background in lichenology they're an extremely understudied group of organisms i've heard that they're the most understudied group of conspicuous organisms there there are because they're easily seen they're covering the trees but most people don't know what any of them are or at least can identify that which species are even the common species wow well once you realized that, that that this was an open door for a lot of potential and exciting work. Um, where where was the first place that you started to get this going? Was there another, there must be other models that exist. How, how did you know where and how to get started? Um, I would say, uh, I guess I first started looking at lichens when I was an arborist, kind of at an early age, I was a tree climber, and you know, when you're in the canopies of trees, like trimming branches and stuff, you're, you, there's lichens everywhere. And I think one of my arborist friends of mine, who's still a good friend today, um, pointed them out to me, and I think I was most drawn to them by how little I actually knew about them. Perhaps the most, the the least of all the the conspicuous organisms around me. So, so which that kind of drew me in to dive into to lichenology, and um, through the support of a lot of people um, in Ohio, there's Barbara Andreas, Ray Showman, a lot of the 
Ohio Moths and Lichen Association members have personally been very generous and helpful in my pursuits. And then just a lot of others in um, lichenologists all around the Eastern United States really have been helping me um, generously to, you know, create the first baseline list of things we have. And a lot of them are new. A lot of them don't have names. So it's trying to put names on those is another really exciting aspect of this. Oh, that's very cool. So um, in your in these brand new pursuits of yours, um, do you connect or have you yet connected with other people around the world who who are who share your interest and uh, and are there any other countries or locations in the world that that have done this too? What what is there that we can learn and who do we need to know? Yeah, um, probably someone who's been a great help to me personally is Dr. James Lindemer from the New York Botanical Garden. You know, in my opinion, he's probably one of the best lichenologists out there. And he actually just came out with a new book, um, which is one of the first comprehensive field guides of lichens for a region that there is. It's of the Great Smoky Mountains. And a lot of the species overlap in Ohio, you know, so it can be very helpful for even here. Mm -hmm. So, but working with him and others from the New York Botanical Garden, that's been really um, a great uh, collaboration for me and just the willingness of those people to help. Uh, very neat. Um, so can you tell us just a little bit more uh, about what lichens are um, and and what's their purpose? And I'm really curious, um, do they supply food for, for other species? How, how do they play into the cycle of life? Yeah, um, so lichens, kind of in a broad context, the, the, there's not a really great definition of what a lichen is, and because of this, most lichenologists include a whole bunch of other taxa together that some of them which are not lichens but are closely related to species that are technically lichenized, loosely or uh, strictly. And lichenized basically means that there's a fungus that is associated with some photosynthetic partner. So that could be a cyanobacteria, that could be um, green algae is probably the most uh, stereotypical uh, example of that. So that's what a lichen is. But lichenologists will also include taxa that are, you know, saprophytic. They're fungi, they don't associate with algae, but they might be closely related taxonomically as in they have diverged very recently in an, evol in an evolutionary uh, biogenetic tree from species that are now lichenized today. And those species are kind of lumped into the lichenologists, um, uh, what we study in, a, in an area. And as far as how they're useful, um, a lot of species I mean, even around here, maybe not so much uh, macro fauna, um, but maybe insects use lichens as shelter, as food yeah, around here. But there are examples of macro fauna, such as reindeer or um, uh, other herbivores, using lichens as a, a, a main or major source of photosynthetic material for them to eat at least at certain times of the year. So they are very important. Um, and I mean, the list goes on as far as recycling nitrogen, uh, retaining moisture in uh, humid uh, environments like tropical environments. Uh, they all play very important roles in those kind of ecosystems. Wow, it sounds fascinating. Well, it sounds as if you have a lot of exciting times that in front of you yet. Yeah. That's really okay. great. Well, we're looking forward to your presentation. And here we are, this is July, so we know that by December you will have probably many more stories to share. Um, from yeah, hopefully. 
in the intervening time. I'm sure you will. All right. Well, is there anything you would like to add? Uh, no, I, I think I've said everything I want to say. <laughs> okay, great. Well, listen, it was so nice to meet you. We're looking yeah, forward to having you and, um, and learning much more about the important work that you do. Yeah, I'm happy to do it. So. Thank you. Yes. Yeah.